Welcome to the Future of Teamwork podcast. My name is Dane Gruneveld, CEO of Huddle 3 Group, and today I am joined by Debbie Yadigari. And uh, Debbie's here, CEO and founder of uh, Village, uh, and she's all about scaling empathy, which is a fantastic topic. So uh, welcome to the show, Debbie. Thanks, Dane. Excited to be here. Excited to chat about the topic. Yeah. So uh, I always like to ask our guests to explain to listeners, you know, how did you get into what you're doing? So scaling empathy is uh, an interesting place to be right now, but you've got an interesting background uh, before that time. So maybe you can join the dots. Yeah. So if you take a huge step back, I went to law school, became a lawyer, right? Not the natural connection to empathy, not exactly what we <laughs> do. Um, but uh, yeah, I did the big law corporate Wall Street thing, uh, starting out at a big firm. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I moved in-house to be in-house counsel to the investment banking division of a large global investment bank. And despite seeing and witnessing the various manager employee interactions my entire career and really coming to think that that was just kind of normal as employees, we were meant just to put our heads down, wait to collect that paycheck and kind of do what our bosses said and told us to do. Um, it was at the Global Investment Bank where I had the best boss of my life. He was really uh -huh. like just truly a gem of a manager. Um, but I experienced a life event. Employees across all organizations are um, experiencing life events. And at Village, we uh, define life events as those things that are personal, but that affect how we show up professionally. They affect work and team. Mm -hmm. So my life event was becoming pregnant. You know, I was newly married, pregnant, having a baby. Very, very, very plain vanilla. Uh, I think all of us have heard of this thing happening before in the workplace, right? It's, it's not too uncommon. But... Sadly, what is also not too uncommon is how managers respond to these life events. So mm -hmm. while I tell you I had the world's best manager and, you know, we lost touch and I'm always afraid that one day he's going to like listen to one of these podcasts. He was a little, you know, while, um, you know, being incredibly well-intentioned, he said and did all the wrong things. And yeah. he just didn't know how to support me through a difficult pregnancy, going out on leave, coming back from leave needing lactation accommodations, all of that stuff that I say is, like I said, very, very, very plain vanilla. So if we like take a look under, you know, the lie or under the hood of, you know, what's going on in everybody's, um, you know, personal situation, it's not just becoming a parent that's affecting how people show up in the workplace. You know, mm -hmm. being a caregiver in the workplace gets a lot of attention, but there's so much that goes on in the background of employees' lives. Um, from taking care of an elder, from going through a divorce, from happy things too, wanting to get married, um, going through a divorce, struggling to get pregnant, going through the fertility journey or adoption yeah. or surrogacy, coming out, transitioning yeah. gender, um, experiencing a loss or a miscarriage, right? These are things that stop managers in their tracks and kind of have them fumbling so often. And HR leaders too don't always know how to respond. So yeah. it was my own personal life event that caused me to eventually jump ship. And when you look at the stats, 41% uh, of all caregivers are going to leave their employer within that first year of having a baby. And all employees who have had, um, I mean, if you look at all employees, 49% of them, so about half of all employees, have walked away from a job at some time during their career based upon mm -hmm. how a manager has responded to them personally during, you know, that personal life of them moment. So I kind of was checking the boxes on both. You know, I was a caregiver, new mom, walking away, checking out within the first 12 months of yep. that birth. And I was also a person who had a manager who didn't respond in a productive, appropriate manner that caused me to walk away. So I started yep. to scratch my head and said, gee, how do we solve this? And fast forward, that's why I'm talking to you about Village today. That's neat. So uh, obviously that was a, a formative experience for you and it's something that you want to solve for a lot of other people. Yeah. How did you land in a platform? Yeah. Like that, that's a big shift. <laughs> huge, 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 right? We're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I did not come out of the gate saying, let me create a SaaS tech platform that's going to deliver the exact thing that managers need to realize in that moment. Um, yeah. It was definitely an evolution. So when I right. first stepped out, um, I, I really focused on motherhood. I had four children in five years. If anyone out there is a parent, they know that's a that's, doozy. That's a type. That's a point. sprint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, total sprint in parenthood. So it did the mom thing hardcore. 
And when number four went off to preschool, um, I started working with organizations to enhance the employee experience um, for women returning to work, building up corporate lactation programs, working with companies on the policies um, to support working mothers, uh, and coaching working mothers on how to keep their career on an upward trajectory. Um, cool. Age myself, that was back when we re referred to things as maternity leave. You know, very quickly we started yeah. talking about like family leave and parental leave. And there was a shift culturally to make this a gender neutral leave process. So slowly companies started to say, hey, we're getting great traction and, you know, amazing results from the working moms. Do you do anything for working dads? That snowballed. Well, what about working yeah. caregivers? We're holding elder care. Then the pandemic. And throughout all of this, we were, you know, my team was kind of wearing the legal hat as well, kind of, you know, shaking our finger and saying, this is what you say and this is what you don't say and be careful. And this is how to navigate those waters. So during yeah. COVID, we're like, how do we take all of this information that we've gathered, all of these learnings that we've accumulated and really, you know, scale um, in a way that's going to support employees at a deeper level? Because when yeah. you come in and you do a manager sensitivity training, you know, we like I said, we started out focusing on working parents, but then, you know, now today we're, we're focused on all life events. Um, managers are going to forget what you tell them about 15 seconds after you tell them. It yeah. goes in one ear and out the other. And we knew this. And so certain companies would have us back on a quarterly basis or, you know, a biannual basis. And it still doesn't make sense, right? 15 seconds is out of the ear. So during COVID, we really had um, the grace and the, the time and the luxury of sitting there and saying, all right, what do we do from here? And so we delivered Village, which is a platform that delivers the information, what we call just in time. So managers yep. understand what they need to know, when they need to know it, very specific to that particular employee's situation that's on their team as that employee is going through it in conjunction yep. with whatever team goals are, are being advanced at that moment to help managers understand how to stand in their shoes of their employees, how to support them in an empathic manner, and also how to push goals forward for the team. Um, you know, uh, really striking that balance of managing through a project, but also showing up for that employee, which is yeah. what today's employees need more than ever. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. So you, so as I hear it, you built a, a consulting practice first, and then once you'd proven out the work, you then built the platform. Bingo. Yeah. Very cool. Yes. Uh, I like that. And this this concept of just in time mm -hmm. is very um, critical right now because I think managers, not only are they impacting the, the mental health of their employees in the way that they show up, uh, but I also think their mental health is being stretched and strained because they're getting flooded with all these initiatives and new tools to be operating within these hybrid and remote work environments and in this, uh, let's call it hypersensitive um, working era that we're in right now where employees ha rightfully uh, thinking, well, what is my company doing about this? And what is my company doing about this? But managers are being expected to have all of the answers right away. So yeah. just, just in time's key. Um, how do you, how do you position then to be just in time for a manager? How do they interact with, with your work? How does, how does that sort of empower them? Sure. So the platform is set up to open, uh, dialogues and conversations between employees and managers. Uh -huh. So employees can kickstart the process by going onto the platform and sharing a life event. That then initiates a sequence of nudges to the managers that yep. allows them to understand where that employee is along that particular journey and how to support that employee at that moment in time. Mm -hmm. Now, if an employee decides not to share through the platform, but let's say the manager hears through the proverbial um, grapevine that the employee um, is you know, going through a specific journey, uh, or experience, that manager can also dig in to our on-demand library of guidance to understand what they need to know about that employee's particular journey. And right. so, um, and going back to, you know, a, a point you just made, you, you know, you pointed out that, yes, there are a lot of, um, you know, there's, there's more pressure on managers to deliver than ever before. And it's yep. not just all these tools, but now they're, 
you know, and they're trying to juggle, you know, hybrid remote workplaces, but they never had to tune into how their employees were feeling before. You know, mm -hmm. it was something that we weren't really talking about. But coming out of the pandemic, um, employees really expect their their workplaces to care about them as an individual because there's options now. There's the yeah. you know the gig economy has been larger than ever. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a white collared professional or you know somebody who who's throwing widgets in a box. You can find mm -hmm. you know a gig um, that pays on a daily basis if that suits your schedule and your lifestyle. And so employees have more options. Coming out of the pandemic, I think all of our lives were turned upside down and we reassessed our priorities. And so companies really want, I'm sorry, employees really want to feel like they're part of a mission and that they have a place of belonging. And for yeah. them to feel that, they need to know that their manager sees them as a whole human being, not just as a worker. So yeah. we're seeing um, what's been interesting about our platform is that no surprise, right? We're seeing that younger employees um, millennials and Gen Z are more likely to use our platform than Gen Xers or baby boomers, but Gen X and baby boomers do too. Um, but what's been really fascinating to see is that the people utilizing our platform on the most frequent basis are the middle managers. And yeah. middle managers are coming onto our platform to share with their managers that they're going through a life event, which tells us two things. It says that middle managers recognize the need to loop your manager into what's going on in the background of your life. And mm -hmm. also it shows that they understand the importance that a manager can play in the life of an employee, not just with the kumbaya feeling supported and like, yeah, I'm part of a team, but also in helping that employee to, um, to address their goals and to get work done. And yeah. to, you know, shift projects, shift priorities, understand true timelines. Um, and when there's conversations around what's happening in an employee's life that include what needs to get done for the team, it becomes a win-win situation where the employee yeah. wants to give more. The manager seeing the employee as a whole human being. And at the end, the company is the winner. You know, we're yeah. gonna greater loyalty. We're going to see greater employee engagement that leads to greater innovation, greater profitability, all of that good stuff. Um, so this is definitely a new concept within the workplace. Very. Um, but it is a lever that companies are just starting to pull, you know, tapping into the personal side of employees. And it is providing very fruitful for the forward, for the forward thinking companies that are already there. Yeah, that it makes a lot of sense that... Uh... You're seeing more usage amongst the earlier generations, but but the middle managers, when you look at just pure economics, you know, people are generally getting married, having kids, twenties, thirties, first house, and then they're looking at second houses, then colleges, uh, not necessarily second houses, they're upgrading their house, whatever it might be, but they're going through these big changing events, like moving house is hard, yeah. uh, moving cities for a job is hard. Um, so there are these kind of, I guess, stepping stones through life. Um, and, you know, we don't, historically, we don't talk about those things a lot, maybe in the break room with a close friend, but you're not talking to, the, to your boss about them. Um, so this concept that you share about an employee being able to kickstart a dialogue is, is very intriguing. Um, what, where are you seeing with that process? Where are you seeing the, um, the, un the unexpected kind of impacts there in terms of the team's uh, mor morale, belonging, sense of sharing information. Once they start these dialogues with their manager, do they feel safer all of a sudden to talk about their life events at work? Uh, you know, how does that play out? Yeah, it starts to change the culture. So by helping managers to understand how to respond to those specific life moments that are so important, like a move or, you know, some of these bigger um, things happening in their lives, it starts to change the way managers think and act overall on a daily basis. And yep. so it is changing morale. Some of the other interesting things that we're seeing is that uh, 
by making by providing a safe space for employees to share what's happening like you said managers are um, becoming privy to information that they wouldn't have otherwise at a certain point right an employee's yeah. gonna so stand up on zoom and you're gonna see their belly right even if yeah, yeah. they haven't shared certain things like that happen or if someone's getting a divorce they're gonna go to hr they might you know take somebody off of their benefits plan you know there are certain things that at a certain point they happen there's other yep. things that we will never know um, one of those things, you know, it's burnout is talked about a lot in, mm -hmm. within, you know, journals and newspapers, but where it's not being talked about a lot is between managers and employees saying, are you personally burnt out? Well, experiencing burnout is actually one of our life events and no surprise, it is most often shared again by middle yeah. managers. So an interesting thing that we've seen is that not a single person who has used our platform to say, hey, I'm experiencing burnout, who's a middle manager or anyone actually, um, but it's been most often used by middle an managers, has um, that person ended up leaving the company. Huh. And you, That's really powerful. Very powerful, right? Because you would think, all right, if this manager is willing to share on this platform with their manager, hey, you know, I'm experiencing burnout. They're pretty much probably feeling like they're done, right? Yeah. So- that means that when we're looping in their manager and we're helping to guide that manager on how to guide that their employee, that middle manager, it's making a difference. Because, you know, when managers, um, you know, reach managerial um, status, yeah. it's usually because they were great individual contributors, right? At yeah. no, no organization have we said, all right, there's 10 people here and He's, you know, the worst performing of the bunch, but he's probably going to be the best manager. Let's choose him. I mean, yeah. but in reality, that's kind of what we should be doing. You know, yeah. that, that's oftentimes what the military does. Uh, I mean, the military looks for the best leaders, but we don't do that in the business world. We take the best individual contributors, take them out of that role and put them in charge of managing people. And they are not equipped to handle every single life event because they're humans and not a single one of us, including me sitting here as the founder and CEO of Village, has the answers for how to yep. respond to every life event. We've None of us have lived and walked in the shoes of all of these journeys. So yep. Village has worked with IO psychologists and subject matter experts and HR leaders and legal experts to really develop the best in class playbook for how to interact with employees who and support employees who are experiencing these life events and it's making a difference. And so yeah. one of those surprises is that we're really able to get ahead of problems and in front of quits. It's not yeah. just a matter of supporting the employee experience, but it's a way to gain valuable insights into what our teammates are experiencing to help the team and lift everyone up a few notches. And that's really I think powerful. That is, I think getting, I love that uh, phrase that you use, getting in front of quits, mm -hmm. because we often spend a lot of time um, focusing on our underperformers in business, mm -hmm. right? And we go in and we put them on a performance improvement plan and we roll out additional training and whatever else, but we're not looking at wow. some of our key talent um, who may be high performing, who may be burnout candidates. And if you can get in front of a quit with that person, I think I sense that there's two major impacts. One, you saved a great person yep. um, who's going to be hard to replace. But two, you probably just created a champion who's going to now embrace the platform, the approach of, of um, scaling that empathy through the organization. And that's got to be huge. 100%. And so often also for those struggling employees that are put on a performance improvement program, yeah. usually there's something going on in the background of their yeah. lives too. Yeah. So if we can tap into like why, um, we might be able to, again, get in, get in front of the problem there. So Absolutely. Problems ahead of quits. It's um, it, it really makes a difference. I always talk about... Um, you know, how sports teams operate. They're truly a family. And while a lot mm -hmm. has been written on, like, look, we're not a family. You don't fire your 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 family members, things of that sort. There is something to be said about how sports coaches, the most yep. high-performing ones, they know their team members inside and out, their players, their weaknesses, the strengths, when to play them, what they're feeling, what their aches yep. are, right? Is this one, is their knee hurting that day? You know, we yep. need to take some of those lessons to the workplace 
in order to know how to play our team at the best of its ability in that moment. Yeah, I like that. And you you also talk about, um, and we'll dig into this in the platform setting in a moment, but you, you made another interesting point on leaders often being individual contributors that got sort of promoted. I wonder if, maybe it's too early to see in the platform, but I wonder if there's a sense that if leaders are starting to adopt these approaches uh, to conversations around life events and using uh, a platform like Village to be in the dialogue, whether that in itself is a a leading indicator that, hey, we've got someone here who's who's going to be an empathic leader, who's going to be someone that other team members are going to be drawn towards working with. Oh, I like that. So if they're feeling like open, yeah. feeling like I want to be part of this team and have people see me, I like that. That's really interesting. Because you don't, yeah. you, it's not It's not conventional leadership training, is it? Right. Conventional oh. leadership training is, you know, oh, how do you do time management yeah. and how do you set up clear expectations yes. and yeah. But not not how do you have conversations about life events with employees and show how active you are in creating that culture of belonging. Right. Absolutely. And we, you know, to be clear, we also are encouraging, um, you know, productivity and things mm-hmm. of that nature. But it's how can we work with this employee and provide the flexibility in that moment, recognizing, you know, that the, there's um, these other characteristics of this particular journey. Um, yeah. a, a few like uh, an example. Most big companies these days have some sort of some sort of fertility support program. One yep. in eight employees experiences infertility or needs a little bit of help starting a family. And this is a popular benefit. Um, yep. And it costs companies a lot of money. Well, earlier on, I was saying how those first 12 months after having a baby, the attrition rate is 41%. There's a 41% chance that you're going to lose an employee. Huge. And doesn't mean that, you know, they're not going to come back from leave. It means they're going to come back to leave. And maybe in month 11, they're going to say, hey, the culture really isn't good here for my new family. So yep. that attrition rate is even higher after a fertility journey. And so it's like, holy cow, companies are paying all this money just for a greater chance to lose someone. And no, I am not saying do away with fertility support. What I'm saying is that we've got to say, why is that happening? And yep. it's because of the friction that builds up between employees and managers throughout that experience. For anyone who's gone through the fertility experience, they know that there's like lots of absences. There's weekly um, appointments at your clinic. So your manager might think, hey, are they out every week interviewing again? Like what's going on? Where are they? They don't understand. Um, There might be certain times where that employee might say, you know, I I can't really make this client meeting this afternoon because their labs hit certain levels and their doctor said, hey, you got to come in right now. And that yep. employee and that manager, again, doesn't understand why that employee just left them in a lurch. Or when someone's going through, for, through the fertility um, journey, at certain times, they're not able to travel. They need to stay yes. with close proximity to their clinic. So, again, if they say, you know, can you send Bob on this trip? You know, I can't make it. Again, the manager's starting to bring in their biases. And so yep. you follow that up with nine months of pregnancy and leave and that's why the attrition rate is higher. Now, compare that with a situation where the manager actually understands, oh, okay, all right, all right. Your labs are hit, hit, you know, great. You got called in, you got that call, awesome. High five, I got the meeting, right? It's like, it's a different experience um, when employees understand, I'm sorry, when managers understand what employees are going through, the way they approach this. You know, another time that we lose a lot of employees that were um, oftentimes workplaces um, here are not so forward thinking about talking about is menopause. It oh, is yeah. something that's very much talked about in mm-hmm. Europe, but in the US, we don't talk about it. Yet, one third of women going through menopause end up off ramping. Well, women go through menopause between the ages of 45 and 55, usually the time that they're very senior and able to grab that seat at the table that everyone's talking about delivering to them. So, if organizations are not supporting employees, through that process and helping managers to understand how how to support an employee and explaining to that manager why somebody might be opening windows in Minnesota in the middle of winter, right? Yeah, they're going to um, they're going to be at a disadvantage. So there's becomes life events can become invisible career barriers, but when yeah. we open lines of communication and educate managers about what employees are going through, not their personal experience, but just high level what that experience means to the team and their work, 
we're able to take not only a more empathic approach to supporting that employee, but a more productive approach to, you know, getting the best that we can out of our employees to push productivity forward within our companies and affect the yeah. bottom line. So yeah. there's so much that goes into this. And it's really a new way of thinking that makes sense. And it's kind of like, why haven't companies been doing this all along? But I think it goes back to what I said earlier on in my career. I just kind of put my head down and was like, okay, this is the way it is. I do what I'm told. And yeah. now employees don't do that anymore, right? They they definitely question, um, you know, what they're being told, but we haven't figured out how to navigate that. And bringing- I think you're right. Yeah. And so by bringing care to the workplace um, and having managers who care about their employees personally as well as professionally, that's the key. Yeah. It feels like traditionally growing up in a couple of industries that I did, we were almost told not to put our foot in the mouth, not to engage in some of those conversations, go and talk to HR or send that person to HR. Yeah. Um, so so that was a gap. And then there was actually one of my former colleagues, uh, Manjin Deman over in the UK, he bought a really cool tool, tool to me called the ladder exercise that his former company used. And there was a way to talk about life events in a, in a future uh, leaning capacity but that was really around dollars mm -hmm. of the life event not feelings emotions distractions mm -hmm. so we would we would sit down with an employee and we would say okay um you're now in your you know late 20s you're a salesperson you're planning to get engaged there's going to be a wedding there's going to be a honeymoon so you're how much are you thinking you need to save okay children house and you'd plan out over like seven years and you would say, all right, you're going to need about this much money at these different increments. How can we help tie that back to your productivity so that you know that you're working towards these life goals? And that was that was good because it showed that, hey, I'm working with Debbie right now to make sure that she's thinking towards those expenses and those important times when she's going to want to um, have the resources, time and money. But but we weren't we weren't talking about the real time, you know, emotional time um burdens of, of of dealing with some of those life events too like planning a wedding sounds exciting until you're doing it <laughs> yeah, absolutely or there's little things you know where you know managers might not know how to navigate like you know you don't want to have a bridal shower that's um just women in the office you want to make mm -hmm, sure mm -hmm. everybody's invited you know you don't want to have um, a party or plan a bridal shower, you know, where you're serving like cute cakes and cupcakes and everything during the month of Ramadan, you know, yeah. you need to be sensitive to, you know, Ramadan when, you know, um, some of your employees will not be eating, they'll be fasting during, you know, the daylight hours. So, you know, there, there's different sensitivities that managers need to bring to the table now that they didn't have to before. And yes, you know, as I mentioned, I come from big law where it's all about the billable dollar. And there were definitely mental exercises um, of the same sort, thinking about how, you know, how much business you have to bring in, how your hours are going to be. And if you have a baby before you hit, you know, partner level, like, how are you going to make up those hours? <laughs> you know, if you take off for three months, you're going to have to like, you know, definitely put in the extra time before going out. And, but, but yeah, but that just, I think, goes more to the hustle culture, both of them, yep. you know, yep. which is which isn't the right way to think about it. And, no, it's not. No, and going back to how do we even, how do we get around the problems? How do we, you know, get ahead of quits? Along the same topic, one of our life events is um, retiring. Mm -hmm. Well, this came to be because we, we pride ourselves on doing in-depth quarterly business reviews with our clients. And one of our clients said, hey, two employees um, gave us two weeks notice that they're retiring. Like two separate situations, two weeks, right? Like that's not a time to do succession planning. So since adding this life event, employees are utilizing the platform to share that, hey, they're thinking about retiring, they are retiring, and it's allowing the succession planning process to begin a lot earlier to make sure that those employees leave the company feeling supported, there's goodwill there. Other employees are watching how those employees are, you know, like approaching their finish line. And yep. relationships are being set up so that way, other employees can reach out to those retiring employees, you know, and can call someone on, you know, while they're gardening and be like, hey, how do I handle this situation? And they'll be open and receptive. 
And so it just, it's going to changing the culture for the long term, in yep. the moment, in the lives of the single employee experiencing a life event, changing the way managers um, interact with all employees on a day to day basis. It's it's a new tool that we're pushing out that has so many positive ramifications. Yeah, that's neat. And retirement. I mean, we've got so many uh, boomers uh, retiring in particular that have got insane amounts of corporate memory, corporate yes. knowledge. Yes. And so getting two weeks notice is a disaster because you want that person to be around for a long time, even if it's not in a full-time capacity. So I'd imagine we're going to see more and more companies using tools like yours to start that conversation at the right time and plan it. So maybe I can keep Bob or Jenny on for another year or two by, by reducing them down to part-time hours or giving them more flexible work arrangements or whatever it might be, giving them a, a trainee who can start picking up some of those skills and uh, experiences on the job. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that goes to like, you know, another one of our life events is wanting to um, improve your career or discuss your career. You know, mm -hmm. there's, you know, um, you know, for the audience here, everyone knows that, you know, performance reviews are absolutely broken at most companies. And oftentimes yeah. emphasis is placed on that, that bonus amount, that dollar amount. And so until the employee hears that dollar amount, that's all they're thinking about. After they hear that amount, that's all they're thinking about. They're not oftentimes, not across yeah. all companies, but, you know, performance reviews um, are not a time where employees have the opportunity to really discuss where they want to go in their career. You know, some yeah. companies are now, you know, getting keen on separating out the two topics, which is what I recommend, um, you know, but younger employees especially have a hard time kind of raising their hand and being like, I really want to discuss this with you. So if yeah. you can marry someone who's retiring with someone who wants to advance their career, and like you said, you know, bring the two together, you know, pair them up, there's, there's so much that we can gather by just understanding where employees are sitting in their headspace um, that's yeah. going to help uh, push companies forward. Yeah, that's neat. So uh, let's dive in a little bit more to the platform. So we've spoken a lot at a, at a high level, um, but you know, when someone signs into your platform, a customer, and they want their managers to, and their employees to start interacting with it, um, what does that look like? Are you, are you coming in and doing some of your early work to adjust policies and things like that? Or is it just plug and play? They can, they can start jumping in and exploring a, an existing library. How, how does it work? A little bit of both. So okay. you can absolutely jump in and start exploring. It's really off the shelf, but we do a fantastic job of what we um, internally call like priming an organization for this, right? Uh -huh. So we provide communication materials that can be disseminated that explain how Village works, why this is going to be beneficial, how yep. the company is partnering with us to support the employee experience, to, you know, upskill managers. Um, you know, we make sure that we come at managers with the, uh, with the attitude of, you know, we know it's hard. This isn't us saying like you're clueless and you really need help here and we're, we're here for you. It's yeah. nobody can possibly have all of these answers. And so we're so excited to support you. So we do a great job of disseminating communications at the get-go. We do a whole empathic management workshop by a webinar uh -huh. that's recorded in case managers, you know, can't tune in um, to the live demo. Um, we follow that up with... Um, a demo for employees. We do another webinar that's Q and A for everybody to come on board and be like, yeah, how do you use this? Every employee has a dedicated employee success guide that reaches out to them once the program yep. rolled out. And then, yeah, once employees get on, they can there's completely explore. So at, on one um, side of it, it's employees can utilize the platform to um, click share a life event. All these life events will pop up. They can choose the life event. There's disclosure language that when you, um, you know, opt to share a life event, we're going to take over the owner's task of educating your manager on how this will affect your work and your team. Right. And then that, like I said, kickstarts nudges to the managers that will arrive in the manager's email inbox. From there, they click into the email or just be a couple of lines. Mary Smith just shared with us that she has just experienced a loss, learn mm -hmm. more here. They can click into the platform. 
Um, and it'll just be a snackable, you know, easy, quick to read little yep. bit on what that manager needs to know then. And then there'll be a timeline. So we'll continue to nudge out what the manager needs to know. Back on the platform side, employees and managers can also access our village experts. We have village experts that cover, cover over 100 subtopics. So, you know, going back to some of our examples, you know, the manager can dig in with, um, you know, a lactation consultant and say, look, my yep. employee returned um, from work. They're apparently breastfeeding because they keep needing to take bumping breaks. I think they're really taking Netflix breaks. They're disappearing all day long. <laughs> like, what's going on here? You know, explain it to me. And maybe our, and while our, one of our nudges would have educated the manager on the frequency and normalcy of pumping times and lactation breaks, if that manager wants to dig in more, they can reach out to our experts in, you know, a number of categories. Employees also have access to our experts. So employees yep. can say, hey, I'm having a co-parenting issue. I need help trying to figure out this elder care issue. I have questions about child care. They can tap into our village experts as well. They can schedule um, Zoom sessions with 30-minute mm -hmm. Zoom sessions on their you know, calendar based upon their the employee's availability as it matches up with the particular expert with whom they want to meet. When it comes to choosing an expert, they're diving into bios, looking at pictures. They're able to find somebody who aligns with them. They can also yes. use our chat feature on the platform to chat back and forth with their huh. expert. Um, we also have a deep on-demand content library outside of the manager guidance on, you know, the managers have access to how do I handle an employee who's just experienced a loss or death in their family. There's also a whole library that's all about, you know, all sorts of issues that affect employees personally, you know, coming out in the workplace, how to, yeah. how to discuss pronouns with your coworkers. And, you know, all of that is in our content library as well. We also yep. have um, a space on our platform called resources that lists all existing policies that might affect some of these life events, bereavement policies, lactation policies, yep. leave policies that managers and employees can dig into without having to like bother HR. Um, and we also list other existing benefits because while they're going to exist elsewhere within the company, managers and employees are able to see what's available to them that might be related to that particular life event that they're going through. And also that employee's employee success guide is able to direct that employee there also. So yeah. besides helping managers, we're also lightening the load of HR. There's less micromanaging of the manager. There's yeah. less... Um, dealing with a lot of the the friction that can develop from that lack of understanding between employees and managers. And HR can just get back that valuable time that they need to do what they yeah. really want to do. So there's all sorts of, and I, I, I covered most of the bells and whistles. There's still other ones too. We provide managers with like, a, you know, a bird's eye view of who's on their team, what life events they're going through, birthdays, anniversaries. We're going to ping yeah. employees and managers on when, um, big events are happening, birthdays or anniversaries. We're going to provide suggested language for how to reach out. Yeah. Well, outside of the platform, when there is, um, you know, a, a current when there's something going on in current events, or if there's a crisis, we're also going to be reaching out to companies and managers and helping them understand how to respond um, to those particular issues in the moment and how they might be affecting their team members. Yeah. Whether it's like a formula shortage. Um, you know, a the Ukraine Russia crisis. Exactly. I mean, yeah, we we had this. We had that conversation when that first uh, started to break out um, with our employees because you know, oftentimes we're interacting with someone who might have Russian heritage or Ukrainian heritage, and it's like, what what do you say? How do you have that conversation with them so that you are empathic and uh, you know you're not just burying your head in the sand? So there's there's a lot of, I mean, we're living in a time when there's just a lot of noise out there there's a lot of stress anxiety world events that is just going on in all of our lives and we can't make assumptions i was recently talking uh, to a ceo who after um you know the death of george floyd she made the point of calling every black employee um, mm -hmm. within her company hundreds she made hundreds of phone calls just to say how are you doing how can we support you and yep. one of those phone calls surprised her because she, one of the employees she called said that he's he was the first in his family 
um, to get like, you know, a white collar professional job. Everybody yep. else is a police officer. And so right. he's a black man with a family, with a black family, all police officers. And he's having a really, really, really difficult time. And yep. she wasn't prepared for that response, you know? And so yeah. it was like the opposite side. And, and he was dealing with different, a di whole different set of emotions. Um, so it, it's important for us just kind of, I think, as a society, as managers, as coworkers, as employees, we're all navigating um, a new territory. And I think we all have to try to strip down our biases as much as possible, you know, turn up our, our hearing a little bit more and really try yeah. to see employees um, beyond their professional worker status and really get to know who they are and what makes them. Yeah. I like that are you okay question because it's open. It allows someone to bring forward whatever they're comfortable sharing. And yeah. um, that's, that's, really, that's a really interesting one. W within your platform, if a dialogue starts, is the manager updating notes? I mean, how does this play with HR and, and note keeping on you know, certain interactions with employees or, or is it, or is it just straight up nudges and they'll, they'll determine and keep their notes as they see fit? Yeah. It's just, it's guidance to the manager. That very right. first share to, um, to the manager, HR can choose to, um, receive a notice that somebody is going through a life event and that is up to the company whether or not they want to be notified and right. village is not meant to circumvent any internal processes um, when it comes to you know having a baby and adding someone to your insurance policy or you know you're still going to have to deal with yeah. like hr paperwork this is a platform that's really just focused on those human interactions and helping managers to understand what they should be doing, um, what's appropriate, uh, what is the best way to interact with their employee at that moment. Which is probably healthier too, because you got to think that with all of the data and data science that's out there, most employees are a little bit worried about Big Brother right now. You know, who's looking at what notes about my life events? Yes. Um, yeah, so I, I like that. I like that it's guidance first. Yes. And in the employees, if they opt not to share a life event, they can mm -hmm. still utilize the platform to connect with village experts and read our on-demand um, library. I mean, you know, enter our on-demand library. Yeah. There's a lot of resources there because we understand not everybody is willing to share what's going on in their life. But what's interesting is once an employee does share, they're two times more likely afterwards to share another life event. So that also says that, you know, they were supported through the first through the first time, um, yeah. and, and felt that it had a good outcome or positive um, a positive outcome and experience. I would imagine, particularly in this talent shortage that we continue to live through in so many sectors, um, it helps with referral hiring too. Because if someone's having a good experience and they're saying, "Hey, my employers give me access to this cool platform and it's helping me deal with life events," you know. Surely that's a reason for other people to want to be there too. Absolutely. You know, but I think that there's a lot of great benefits out there across companies. And we always say, and and those are great, you know, tools for, for hiring too. You know, companies love to put together their list of benefits. Yeah. And I always challenge companies not just to list out their benefits, but to kind of put together a culture book of why, why they're investing in these. And uh -huh. what it means and how it will positively affect the the employee experience, um, but we are, you know, we're looking at it from the opposite side of like we've got to clue managers into what's happening as well, and that yep. goes to really creating culture. And so when going back to recruiting, culture, eighty five percent of employees will say that culture is more important than compensation, and especially in the hybrid remote work environment, culture is not about, you know, Friday free pizza and the food yeah. on the table. It's about how somebody reacts to you across the screen here on Zoom. Yeah. And that, you know, isn't something that we can buy off a shelf. Um, that's something that we have to develop together. And so Village is a tool that helps to develop that. Yeah, that's really neat. That's really neat. So my final question then, Debbie, is that if, uh, if, if people, if managers in particular, but employees too, start embracing this um, opportunity to use this available data and these experts to 
you know, leverage the resources of their workplace, their relationships at work um, to, to really navigate through life events. What does that mean for, for teams in the future? What do you hope to see if you roll forwards five years, 10 years? We're not going to see 49% of employees leaving companies because their manager responded to them poorly when it came to something personal. Um, yeah. We're not going to see employees experiencing invisible career barriers. We're going to see employees um, with the ability to focus 100% on their work when they're at work and not yeah. having to deal with the emotions that they're feeling because a manager spoke to them or responded to them in a particular way. Yeah. And the companies are only going to, you know, are only going to be able to do more because of that. That's neat. So I'm hearing, you know, better attention, more personal and career growth, and then team productivity. 100%. Yeah. 100%. I recently um, met somebody who had been working for a company for 18 years, and it uh -huh. came up that she has had like uh, the most pittance raise in 18 years. And I said, yeah. why have you stayed? And she said, I like the people I work with. I couldn't leave them. So if yeah. every workplace could create an atmosphere where nobody wants to leave because they enjoy the people that they work with, that would be amazing. And it would be cool. Empathic leadership is the way to start creating that. Yeah. No, I love that, Debbie. Well, thank you for sharing your story and, and the Village platform with us today. Um, you know, getting ahead of quits, retaining corporate knowledge, or at least planning to transition corporate knowledge and memory, um, morale in the team. I, I, like, I also loved your point on separating out performance management from development planning and goal setting. Um, there's, there's so much there. And, and while on one hand, that I know there's a lot of managers out there right now that are frustrated with all of the additional burdens they have to manage in the lives of their employees. Uh, I think your final point there is key. Do a good job of it and, and then the team will, will look after itself and drive the productivity and, and lighten your load. I love that. I love that soundbite. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. You bet. And uh, for our listeners that are looking to uh, hear a bit more, contact you, uh, learn about Village, how do they best find you? Village is spelled V-I-L-L-Y-G-E, uh, the Y for Yadagari. So you can nice. find us, um, we're village.com, on all social media at Village. Again, that's V-I-L-L-Y-G-E. And Cool. And I loved your post as well on LinkedIn that said Debbie uh, <laughs> stands for diversity, equity, belonging, and inclusion. I thought that was pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's literally my name. Literally That's my awesome. name. And it is, it is a tool that um, Village is a tool that uh, drives belonging forward. That's awesome. Well, thanks for your time today, Debbie. Thank you so much. I appreciate yours. You bet.